I feel like I'm beginning to know what I'm doing here. Like I have notes in front of me and everything. Professional. When I first started doing the reading for this one, I read the motive and method and everything. I was like, oh, well, I've read this story a million times before. Like it's just a robbery for drug money and somebody ended up dead. But I read a little bit further and this is not a typical case because the victim of this case is a nine-year-old little girl. So if you do not want to hear about child murder, I do not blame you and I will see you next time. I'm warning you now, it's not an incredibly gory case, but it is a nine-year-old and that in itself is pretty rough. So if you're not comfortable with that, completely understandable. But if you are, let's get right into it. Now let me start off by introducing you to all of the people that I'm going to be talking about, okay? First of all, we've got nine-year-old sweet little girl, Autumn Wallace. In her testimony, Autumn's mother said that she wanted Autumn to be known as more than just the victim of this crime. So I'm going to tell you what her mom said about her in court, about the kind of person that she was. Autumn was a really good student. She had straight A's. She loved swimming and fishing, and she wanted to be an artist. So Autumn lives with her sister, April, who is about 18 years old and has a little baby of her own who obviously lives in the house with them, and Autumn and April's mother, Linda. So that's the household. But for a while, um, they had a fifth person living in the house who... I guess she would have been the fourth person because this is before the baby was born, but like, whatever. She was also there, is the point. And this person was named Maria de Rosio Alfaro. And she went by Rosie, so that's how I'm going to refer to her for the rest of the video as Rosie. So Rosie was living there because she was friends with April. They were about the same age. And at the time that she was staying over there, she was pregnant and had nowhere else to go. Rosie had a tough life, a rough go of it, okay? She started using drugs, and when I say drugs, I'm not talking about, like, pot. I'm talking about cocaine and, I want to say meth? Like, serious, scary drugs at 12. And once she starts doing drugs, everything kind of goes downhill from there. She is working as a sex worker. And most of the details I'm going to give you about her life are testimony, pulled from testimony of her friends. So she would sleep with drug dealers in exchange for drugs. She gave birth to multiple children at the time of this crime. She had, I think, she had multiple kids already. And she was pregnant with twins. So that's, picture that when I tell you what happened. She was pregnant with twins at the time. Now she lived with April in that house with everybody for a little bit and so they all knew her pretty well but she ended up moving out and living with her boyfriend and her kids and April was no longer friends with her and the reason that I read for this was that she doubted her veracity which basically means that Rosie was just like lying a lot. So they weren't friends anymore but there wasn't an insane amount of drama because they would still meet up sometimes. Rosie would ask her for favors and ask her to drive her places and April would do it. So on the day of this crime, Rosie once again is pregnant with twins and she goes on a drug binge with this guy named Reynoso and according to testimony, there may or may not have been a second man who was also with him. But what we know is that it was her and Reynoso, they were doing drugs together. And they had spent all day doing all of these drugs. Eventually they ran out of drugs and they ran out of money to buy drugs and they wanted to continue to get high. So Rosie's solution, what she told Reynoso, which there are a whole bunch of, she gives a whole bunch of different stories for what happened here, I'm going to recount all of them to you. I'm going to try, okay? So she tells Reynoso, like, hey, I used to live over 
with the Wallaces, I left some of my stuff over there. So if you drive me, I can just get my stuff out and then we can go pawn it and buy some more drugs. Now, in separate instances, Rosie has said that she did not think that anybody was going to be home, but she also said that she knew that Autumn was gonna be home. So she said both of those things, believe what you want. And by the way, she's had a baby with her this whole time while she was doing all these drugs. So they drive over to the Wallace home and she hands her baby off to Reynoso and she's like, wait here, I am going to go get the stuff. Now that's one of the stories. Okay, in another story, the story in which there is this mysterious second man who is referred to as Beto, B-E-D-O, she says Beto went in with her, threatened her to kill Autumn. Now when they get to the house, Autumn is home alone. She's making paper dolls because she's a nine-year-old girl. So Rosie comes to the door, says hi to Autumn, and asks if she can use her bathroom, which is super weird. Like, why would somebody drive to your house just to use your bathroom? But, you know, Autumn is nine, and she knows Rosie. Rosie used to live here. Rosie's over dropping by all the time, you know? So she's like, sure, come in. Doesn't think twice about it, okay? And Rosie comes in, and Rosie asks her, She's like, hey, Autumn, will you come in the bathroom with me? And she's like, yeah. And she pulls out an eyelash curler. And she's like, hey, could you clean this eyelash curler for me? And so Autumn starts cleaning it. And while she's looking away at the eyelash curler, Rosie begins to stab her. Autumn is stabbed 57 times. And what Rosie will tell you is that she only stabbed her the first few times and this Beto man who was in the house with her did all the rest of the stabbing but what the evidence will tell you okay there was blood Autumn's blood found on Rosie's shoe shoe prints found in the house that are consistent with Rosie's shoes and Rosie's fingerprints found in the blood there is no evidence of anyone being in that home who was not a member of the Wallace family or Rosie. And if you ask Rosie, she'll tell you depending on the day that either she was threatened to do it by this Beto character who has never been identified, nobody knows who he is, she won't give any more details about him, no description, no nothing. Um, or she'll say, oh, I had to kill her because she saw me taking all this stuff and she knew that it wasn't mine. Because obviously the stuff wasn't hers. So Rosie ends up taking a whole lot of things out of the house and the value of all of those things put together is about 250 to $300 when she pawns them at the pawn shop. So that's like if you murdered a child in order to pawn their Nintendo Switch, like even less than that. Now there is some confusion over which knife was used to kill Autumn. Were there multiple knives? Did she take the knife? Cause she says that she took the knife with her when she left, but there was a paring knife found right next to Autumn's body. But also the Wallace family testified that there was a 12 inch boning knife that was missing from the property. So Rosie kills Autumn takes all this stuff and leaves. And then Autumn's older sister, April, comes home and sees that the house is a wreck. And it looks like somebody has been in there and tracked the place and robbed the place. And she's calling for Autumn and Autumn's not answering. So Linda, the mother, comes home and finds Autumn in the bathroom. And Linda is obviously understandably traumatized. This murder happened in 1990, but even in recent statements, she is just devastated and 
wants the person who killed her daughter to die for it, which obviously it's something that you never get over. Rosie is arrested on June 25th, which is 12 days after the murder. She's taken in and she's interrogated for hours and she ends up confessing, but at first she says, oh, well, I did it because um, she saw me and she knew who I was and she knew that I did it. Um, but then after she got a defense attorney, she started mentioning this Beto character and oh, he is the one who did most of the stabbings and like, I only stabbed her a few times, which like, if a nine-year-old dies of stab wounds and you stabbed her the first few times, like, you did it. If you might not be the only person who did it, but you definitely did it. Now, as I have mentioned multiple times before, she was pregnant with twins. She gave birth while she was incarcerated. And she ultimately was sentenced to death. Now, this is, she says, it says that she was the first woman sentenced to death in Orange County, California. And I don't know if that's ever or if that's just since after the death penalty was reinstated in 1978. California is one of those states that has the death penalty technically, but basically never uses it. They haven't executed anybody in the past decade. Now, as death penalty convicted people do, Rosie went through years and years and decades of appealing. And in 2014, her death sentence was overturned. But then in 2017, her death sentence was reinstated. And the main defense that her lawyers and her side put up was that she was addicted to drugs. She was very high when the murder was committed and she lived a really hard life, had a really tough upbringing. So on one hand, there's the fact that she is a Latina woman who grew up in a very bad situation, started doing drugs at 12, had multiple children that she was not economically able to take care of. Um, and on the other hand, she stabbed a nine-year-old 57 times. And that's really hard to get past. Autumn's mom is obviously not forgiving about it, wants the death penalty, and Sylvia, Rosie's mom, basically got on the stand at penalty and said, I know that she did something really awful, but please don't kill my kid. And please don't kill my kid is a really hard thing to argue with. <sighs> so yeah, that's the case. If Autumn had lived, she would be 39 years old today. And her classmate on findagrave.com says that Autumn was a warm, happy, kind, loving little girl. She was a little baby artist making paper dolls. And she is the important person in this case. Our next video is going to be about Elias Abuelazam. He killed five people from 2009 to 2010 in Michigan, Virginia, and Ohio. So let's find out what that's about. See you then.